What's up guys? Welcome to part 7 of getting started with Adobe Premiere Pro. Alright, in this video I'm going to show you the pen tool and the pretty awesome features that it holds in it. The pretty cool things that you can do with it, okay? So let's just go ahead and get started. Now let me go ahead and set you up here. I'm going to press V, okay, on my program to get out the select tool. Alright, I have two layers here, okay? You can see I have one layer, which is my video file. Okay, and I have my second layer, which is my graphics. So here's what the video file looks like. You know, it's just me playing the ukulele. You've seen it before. And I have my graphic file, which is kind of like a wallpaper I made in Photoshop. So you'll see that the base layer is that graphic, and the top layer is in my timeline. It's going to show on the program because it's above my graphic layer, right? Just makes sense. Think of it like a piece of paper. Bottom layer is not going to show, right? Because the top piece of paper is over it. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and make the video file layer bigger. I'm going to go ahead and just adjust this here. Make it bigger. Very cool. And what we have here is actually this line. And before, I don't know if you've noticed this line right here, but what it does is it actually adjusts the opacity of the video. What does that mean, Jerry? What is opacity? Opacity means the transparency of the video, which means it's see-through. If it's 50% opaque, you're going to see 50% through it. That means it's halfway visible, halfway not visible. All right, so let me go and drag it down to about 50%. And if you hold control while dragging, you can actually get a finer drag. See, I'm like moving my mouse like crazy, but it's only moving so much. And if I let go of control, it moves like, like that. Okay, so anyways, let me go down to about 50. Okay, I'm not gonna get exact, but okay, so I let it go, and now you can see that, yeah, I can see 50% through my video sample file. I can see the wallpaper graphic beneath it. If I drag this to 0%, you now I can't see any of the ukulele video and I see all of the wallpaper graphic. If I move it back all the way up to 100% and now it's completely visible. That's pretty cool. That is what this line does. Something very cool about Adobe Premiere is that we can change the function of this line or we can actually view different lines for different functions. So if we click this effects in Adobe Premiere CC, it is this effects button and in other versions it looks it's in the same area so I wouldn't worry about it just come over here and just click around so I'm gonna go ahead and click that button and I'm gonna go to motion and you can see we have position scale and uniform scale rotation anchor point anti flicker filter so just as an example let me click scale and you can see now that this is at a hundred percent scaled okay if I move this up let go now you can see the video has just gotten larger okay so I can easily adjust the size of my video now just a heads up I would not recommend adjusting the size of your video through this line even though it's possible and it's easy it's if you plan on animating the size of your video this is an easy way especially if you add keyframes which we'll go over in a bit but there's a better way to do it and I'll go over that in the next video okay so let's just go ahead and lower this down back to about a hundred percent which is super hard to get because it's it's just tough to get it perfect when using this line. That's one of the reasons why I don't recommend this. We also have time remapping, which changes the speed of the video. So if I click the line and drag the video up, drag the line up, you can see where the clip's going to end. And if I let go, now the clip is going to play super fast. Okay, I can even drag it up even more. Okay, so you can adjust speed like that, which is really, really cool. Just a heads up, though, if you do change the speed using this method, you cannot use the speed the rate stretch tool after that okay it's either the rate stretch tool or you're gonna use these curves okay so let me go ahead and switch this back to opacity here let me go ahead and dive into the pen tool okay so I'm gonna grab the opacity again and actually explain the pen tool and what it does now that you've seen what this line does it adjusts some settings on the video which is really cool I mean if you just bring this down that's a video effect itself I guess you can just play it and the video will do its thing and you know it's really it's really cool I mean I guess that's a cool effect alright so now that you understand what this line does let's go over the pen tool and what that does it actually allows you to have more control over the animation of this line and this line is actually a curve which you didn't see before but here we go you can actually click the pen tool which you can do you can click 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 or let me go back get V again so it's a select tool all you do is you hold control on your keyboard and it acts just like the pen tool okay see how my now my arrow has a plus sign next to it click 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 there you go my select tool just acted like the pen tool and here's what I can do now okay I can actually I have these keyframes what I can do is hover over a keyframe and move it over move it down whatever look how the line is now breaking let me go and just show you what this does ok 
Okay, let me zoom in a bit using Alt and Scroll Wheel. I'm going to kind of tighten these up and just show you what this does. You'll see at this point, if I hover over it, the opacity is going to be at 100%. If I go over this and hover over it, opacity is going to be at, I'm going to move this down to 0%. Okay, so now at this point, the video should be completely non-visible. And back up here, it's going to be 100%. If I play this over, check out the program. It's visible. Boom, fades to zero and bumps back up to 100%. So there you go. You can transition your opacity using this ramp right there, using this curve. Now, Jerry, you keep calling this curve. Why do you keep calling it curve? It doesn't look like a curve. Well, this is a curve editor. And right now what you're doing is you're using keyframes that are acting as a linear transition. Let me show you what I mean, okay? If I right-click this keyframe, we have linear, bezier, auto bezier, continuous bezier, and hold, okay? I'm actually going to select the middle keyframe point and show you what each of these bezier things do, what each of these do, okay? So linear makes it so it's a constant speed change, okay? You can see they're solid, straight lines. Right-click that, go to bezier, and if I move this up, you'll see that it smoothens it out, but now I can change what these handles look like, okay? I can move each of these handles differently, all right? If I right click and go to auto bezier, it'll reset to where the bezier was. And if I move this, okay, and if I change a handle and I right click, now you can see it's on continuous bezier automatically because it's automatically, auto bezier is going to say, all right, I want it to be smooth on both sides. So if I change one of these, it's going to transition it to an, a continuous bezier, which is changing both sides to keep it a smooth, a smooth transition compared to a regular bezier where you're controlling only one handle at a time. This is affecting both sides. Super fast review. Linear. Constant speed. Okay, no matter where you move it, it's going to be a hard change. It's going to bounce kind of. Right click, go to bezier. You can change one side at a time. Let's say you've messed it up. Right click that, go to auto bezier. It'll smoothen that out. But if I right click that and go to continuous bezier or move one of these sides off of auto bezier, it's going to make a smooth transition. It's going to try to keep a smooth change throughout the curve. That's what continuous does. Hold actually makes it so we have no change until the next keyframe and it boom, 100% change on the next frame. So it just cuts. Congratulations, in this video, you've learned how to take advantage of these animation curves and use them to your advantage to make some pretty unique effects. And if you get creative with them, you can do some really, really nice animations. And if you get really detailed, you'll have a ton of different points in here. And you'll be doing some really cool, cool stuff. Okay, so like bounce. And then, you know, you can do really awesome things when you get familiar with using the animation curve. So again, that was the what the pen tool can do. Except instead of using the pen tool, I just used my select tool. And I held, I used my select tool and I just held control to make points. Or if you're lazy to hold control, you can use the pencil and just click instead. And then drag, and you can do all that good stuff that we were doing earlier. All right, you have a ton of points. How do you delete them? You just right click on them and go to delete. And if you're curious what ease in, ease out does, let's ease out. And you'll see it only, we keep a constant change over here on this side, and it eases out on this side. And if I ease in, let me just give you this one, it's only going to create the curve on that side. Seriously guys, let me know if I explain this well enough. If I have it, I will definitely remake this video for you guys so you can understand how these animation curves work because they get really awesome if you understand it. I mean, you just have to understand that you can make keyframes wherever you want on the timeline basically and that you can adjust them to be linear, bezier, auto bezier, or continuous bezier to really get the exact animation that you want to get. So it just takes practice with these curves, but I promise once you do get the hang of it, get some really awesome stuff done so let me know again in the comments if i did an okay job of explaining this curve editor for you guys so you've made it through part seven of this series click part eight so i can show you the effect controls and fix something that has been really really bugging me since the beginning of this series and i swear like i can't wait to change this one setting because it's i have like ocd or something anyway to find out what that fix is let's go ahead and dive into the next part